Glenn Kilmichael Croaks the sequel. This is like when you're talking about what build up this game has, when you remember what happened last year. I mean, the whole country was talking about that in the aftermath when people realized the Kilmichael had more than 15 players on the pitch for the final play of the game. People were saying the game should have been replayed. It looked for a while like it might be replayed because Glenn obviously filed an official appeal. In the end, the game wasn't replayed and Croaks were left as All-Ireland Club football champions. And now they get to go at it again in the All-Ireland semi-final. I mean, you couldn't ride it really, could you? No. And in some ways, I'm kind of glad it's the semi-final and not the final all over again um, because... With Kill McCord winning what three in a row, I think Glenn doing back to back. Um, there was there's possibly enough that kept happening to be a sense of like Dublin and Leinster kind of thing where people just get a little bit you know fed up with the same. But the fact it's a semi final, um, I think it's great. And obviously, Bridges and Castlehaven waiting, waiting in the wing for whoever wins it. Um, it's the 50th year, I think, of the and the American Cup as well. Some was saying, I think it started in 74, or so um, it's going to be a cracker. Uh, Kill McCord. Probably won't need 16 men this time around. Um, I reckon that I reckon that they might just nip it by a couple of points again, a bit like it was last year. Um, I thought it wasn't great. You know, they're not coming in with you know great reputation. Kill McCud, the two biggest stories they probably had have been the 16 man, and then not feeling the team for the the game against Bally Bowden when they are the you know one of if not the biggest club in the country. So. Um, and then, of course, they've all the side stories about Shane Walsh and the money behind all that. And but like, it's nothing new, you know. They've had they've had plenty of external faces. I remember being in college when Brian Kavanagh was um, was uh, trained to be a teacher, and he was you know come up from Longford. He was playing with them. I think Adrian Morrissey from Wexford, um, who was someone else. Was like Kevin Diaz, of course, came from Armagh in the AFL and was playing with them. So it's not like it's the only place that it happens, but people do like to. They do like to try and beat down a team who are winning. You know, it's a real Irish thing to do. So they've got so many sticks uh, been thrown at them between 16th man, not feeling for the final, Shane Walsh, etc. That um, they're probably delighted in some ways. You know, the people are throwing all this at them. Um, Glenn will also be delighted, of course, because it takes a bit off them. Um, I still, I don't know. I don't want to go into predictions too early. I'll probably say a few more things. I'll probably change my mind. But I, I fancy Kill McCode. They're just... They're just on a, a bit of a roll at the moment as a club and they're, they're going to be impossible to stop, I think, really. Well, that's it. When, when, when you're talking about... Like, when you're talking about... um, Sorry, when you're talking about the neutrals watching this game and the people that don't really have a horse in the race, a lot of the neutrals are going to be rooting for Glenn to win this game. Because Kilmichael Croaks, I said, what, what kicked off the Shane Walsh thing, in my opinion, what kicked off the All-Ireland final controversy to another level was the fact that it was Kilmichael Croaks. Like, I'm not... Mm. It's They are seen as, as close to a professional club as you could possibly have. They did bring in Shane Walsh a couple of weeks after he kicked nine points in the All-Ireland final. And a lot of people were unhappy about that. And a lot of people were saying, you know, Kilmichael Croaks shouldn't get to win that uh, final. There was like a lot of people in comments on my videos who were really unhappy that they felt like Kim McCood were just going to get to get away with this. And the reality is they kind of did. Like they mm -hmm. were left with the All-Ireland Championship. And like the reality is if that player wasn't on the pitch, would Glenn have scored a goal? No. But you can't open the door to teams leaving players on knowing that they might be able to get away with it. So that was a precarious situation for the GAA. I think time has healed that a little bit and people have kind of been like okay well storm's blown over a little bit but it'll be very interesting to see if any controversy happens in this game between the two sides like what we're going to do is we're going to run through each team we're going to run through them team by team and then i'm going to say have they improved have they not improved what's different about them this year and then what can we expect prediction so we'll start with glenn Glenn's top scorer, so big, massive, massive shout out to Matthew Hurley, the Gaelic statsman. I mean, go follow yeah. him if you don't already. Anything stats related in the yeah. GA, he's the man to go to. Um, I have up here, he has the top scorers for Glenn and Kilmichael Croaks. So Danny Tallon is Glenn's top scorer with 2-7. Um, and like uh, most of that has come from placed balls. Now, the catch is most of these scores are only from the Kilray game onwards. 
But from that onwards, Emmett Bradley's hit 12 points, Connor Glass has hit 1-6, Ethan Doherty, Jack Doherty, Una Mulholland are, have all hit 6 points each, Cahill Mulholland hit 1-2, Colin McGuckian 4 points, Kieran McFall 3, Stevie O'Hara, Michael Warnock, Johnny McDermott with 2, Connor Convery, Colin Bradley, Connor Carville, Tina Vanagan, and Ryan Duggan all with 1. So the first thing that you notice there is they don't have a Shane Walsh type score. Mm. They don't have someone that is the marquee forward. They don't have a Shane Walsh or a Paul Mannion, or I would argue even a Darren Mullen. They don't have your hang your hat on them forward. Danny Talland is the closest that they have to that. They're a very smooth, well-oiled, well-drilled machine. Mm. And they get the ball to the right player at the right time to take the shot. They're not as reliant on a couple of players as Kilmichael Croaks are to get the scores for them. And when you look like you can see that when you look through their scores in Derry, they beat Canis's 115 to 9, they beat Lavi 18 to 14, they beat Owen Rua 19 to 7, Glenn, they beat Michael Davitz by 214 to 3 9, they beat Ballon the Screen 17 to 3, Balahi by 412 to 111, Glenn then beat Kilray 211 to 9, beat Slock Neil 15 to 6, and beat O'Donovan Ross in the Derry final 113 to 7. In Ulster, they beat Carrigan 11 points to 7. They beat Nave Cunnell 10 points to 1-6. And they beat Scottstown 13 points to 11 in the Ulster final. So their average conceded is 599. That's 10 points again. Their average mm. scored is 112 again. 13 goals and 138 points that they've got. Now, again, massive shout out to Matthew. That's all from him. Yeah. Um, but the reality is when you look at those stats... Immediately what jumps off to me is something that we pretty much all know about Glenn. They win by controlling the game. They win by making you play on their terms. And they are better at eking out the scores, scraping out the scores, getting the scores at the key moments than you are. And that's kind of how that they've won these games. Although the Scottstown one was an exception to the rule. That was a brilliant game. Yeah. It's... um. It's almost like a, a Malachi O'Rourke playbook um, or probably an Ulster playbook, you would have to say. It's, uh, as you said, it, it's on our terms. Um, and Malachi O'Rourke has been doing that forever. Um, didn't he win the All-Ireland with like Loop or someone like that uh, 20 or more odd years ago as well? The thing in Scottstown, the, I think the best thing they did against Scottstown was stopping Rory Began from having too many chances. There were no... You know, they, they didn't give away stupid frees. They didn't give away many 45s. And then their best, I thought their best player was um, the Una Mulholland. Um, brilliant player. He's been called into the Derry squad as, as far as I know. Um, he could have had a goal or two. He kicked three points. Um, Ethan Doherty is the young player of the year as well, I think, is Sydney. And then you have McFall, Glass. Even the keeper, I thought, you know, as a former goalkeeper, I'm always looking at goalkeepers. But Conor Bradley is pretty handy in goals, made a good save at the end as well to deny the goal. I think the other thing I have to mention as well is last year's final team still has 13 of those this year and the start against Gotstown. And then obviously you've got um, thingy coming McFall. back, McFall coming back in as well. So um, they're just... How big is he coming back in? Ah, uh, he's... It's just ex- experience more than anything, and the fact that he's been away and come back, and some some people you know have been there might be. There's almost a kind of sense of oh, you know, I have to go all over again. Whereas for him, it's almost like oh, deadly, you know, I get, I get a crack at this now. It's it's not it's kind of new for him in in some ways after being away for a while, um, and just the fact that they have Connor Glass in there as well, like he's how many players does he work like on a team, you know, any team in Ireland would give their left leg to have him in there. Um, and then the other side, I suppose, it, <clears throat> everything as well is that they are defensively so solid. I know they can, they, you know, the scores there that, that Matthew is up, they do concede quite a bit, but they they have the the array of scores and the, the as I said, they're not relying on a Shane Walsh. It's just such a spread. I think they had seven or eight different scores from play against Scottsdale out of the 13 that they got. Um, yeah, they're just, they're an all round kind of team and th- there's not going to be a headline, you know, of a Shane Walsh kicking one eight or whatever. So I, I think that kind of suits, um, it'll suit them a little bit, but then, you know, they have to do the job on Shane Walsh. There, there's no getting away from that either. Um, and whether they can do that or not, you know, is 
Is another question as well. Um, you probably have Kilmer good scores, I'd say, for Matthew as well, have you? Kilmer Kraus, yeah, I do. Yeah, Adam here. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> oh no, hundred percent. Like, and like, I'll get to that in a minute. But when we're talking about Kieran McFall, like to go back mm. to him, people were saying in the comments before that game, and they were saying after that game that if Kieran McFall was around, Glenn would have won. Simple as. They were mm. just saying. Kieran McFall is that good that if he hadn't been playing for Glenn that day, they would have beaten Kilmer Crokes in that final. Now, we can't know that. Would he have made Glenn better if he was on that pitch? Yes, he would have. If, mm. Like McFall at his best makes Glenn better. He makes Derry better. He makes most teams better. But the reality is, is that you, you can't automatically say that Glenn would have beaten Crokes that day. Because here's the thing that a lot of people don't like to say, but here's the truth. Kilmer could were the better team that day. They deserve to win that final. They were the better team on the day. And you you can like argue about the what happened at the end, and Crokes shouldn't have done what they did at the end, leaving the extra man on. There's a load of confusion, and they really messed up there. But the reality is, for the 60 minutes, they were the better team. And if you take that last play out of it, not one person would be saying Glenn should have won that game. People would yeah, be saying that Glenn true, didn't yeah. turn up. And play to their level, which they didn't. <clears throat> I've definitely seen Glenn play better. They got the goal mm. immediately, and I felt like they kind of got a bit giddy or something. And Crokes took over from that point for a long periods of the game, and they were the better side. Yeah, and I think Malik O'Rourke recently enough um, in an interview kind of admitted that. Now the, mm. I, I don't know who wrote the article, but uh, they kind of said, you know, it's almost like been in the panto. You know, is it? Do you believe him or do you not? Is it just a way of? Of uh of playing down a story maybe that I'm sure still bothers them in the uh, deep down yeah. it bothers everybody I'm sure associated with them, um, but yeah no I I Kier McFall yeah you're right he would have made a difference but we'll never know if if it would have altered the game the game would have been every play would have been different you know um and you could argue either hand kill McCood you know missed a couple of you know points opportunities that they probably could have got themselves and you know the odd bad shot selection here and there we'll never know but what he does do is he changes teams and he changes Glenn and he offers I think he offers kind of more what would you say there's a, there's an encouragement there for others particularly some of the younger guys in the team when they see him and you know the, the war horse attitude that he brings they up their game as well to try and keep up with him and the fact you've got Connor Glass doing likewise means you know if you have a double reason to up your game and push for your team and certainly it'll be a it'll be an interesting one but yeah you're, you're right he, he brings a different dynamic to to the team and glenn are, are better off for him yeah no i do agree like he, he's come back in and he's right away slotted into being one of their top three players mm. immediately like i think their best three players me personally i think it's glass bradley and mcfall Mm. Uh, Ethan Doherty, sorry, as well as yeah, makes that a four in my opinion because yeah. I can't really rule any of them out. But they're they're the guys that make them tick. They're the, and Danny Talon is a key finisher for them. Like when you're talking about the game last year, and we're going to get into why this would be different. Is we'll get into where the venue is. We'll get into where mm. this game is going to be played. And um, we'll move now to Kilmacool Croaks. So Kilmacool Croaks, their top scorer, no surprise here, is Shane Walsh. Four goals and 33 points Shane Walsh has scored from the start of the Dublin Championship up until now. Paul Mannion is second with 26 points. So, I mean, the difference between Shane Walsh and Mannion is insane. Dara Mullen has hit 14 points. Keane O'Connor with 12. Shane Cunningham at 1-9. Hugh Kenny then with three goals and two points. Shane Horn at 1-6. And I won't keep going down to the bottom, but those are the top Scores for Kilmacud, they're the top seven that they have. Now, again, that's massively different to Glenn's mm. top scores because you have two out and out at the top, Mannion and Walsh, that everybody knows are the two that you have to stop. But the question is, how on earth do you stop them? Michael Warnock is a good man marker. He's probably mm. more likely they're going to sweep. Ryan Duggan might take one of them. Cahill Mulholland will definitely be put onto one of them. But if you are Glenn, like a Malachi Rock, how on earth do you even go about stopping them two? Do you try and stop them or do you try and outscore them? Um, but 
it's very tricky, I think, for the likes of a, an Ulster team and particularly like Glenn to outscore them or do you just try and shut them down in true kind of Ulster fashion, you know, and just kill the game completely um, as a, a scoring contest. Um, Glenn, I suppose, will take a little bit of heart going forward from the fact that Alex Byrne for Nace and Dara Kerwin were both very, very strong and really gave, well, Andy McGowan had a tough day at the office anyway. Um, but I don't know how you stop Shane Walsh. And, you know, all the headlines will be about, oh, you know, and paying him money to do this. And it is disappointing in some ways because Kilmacud is a, a team have expanded so much. They've had such um, success at failure level and underage that it's probably frustrating for some of the younger members who maybe will be hoping to be on the team and then they, you know, pay amount of money to bring in this lad from Galway you know he's you know one of the best footballers in the country but how do you stop him I don't know you can put war on a gun and see but it'll probably be like when you know my club the downs try to stop him you end up having three or four different lads on him in the space of 60 minutes and in most of the time none of them work so you just keep chopping and changing lads he'll just keep doing what he does anyway he'll come out the field if he needs to he'll stay in there if he needs to He'll pick the ball up in his own half and you know score into an empty net at the end if he needs to. Like it doesn't really I don't think it matters too much to Shane Walsh. I don't think it matters too much to Kill McCud. They'll they'll play their own game and whatever you know tactical switches they need to make, they'll make. Um be interesting to see if Malachi O'Rourke, you know, sticks Warnock on him and says, you know, your job is just to mark him. Because it, they, they can play so defensive that they could put two or three on him, you know, and hope that like Diaz and Cunningham and the others don't have much of an impact then if they can shut them down further out the field. And it's saying that the other option then is to stop the ball getting into him in the first place, um, which is probably more likely what they will do. They probably line up, you know, their, their 15 men across when Kilmacud are attacking. They'll have their banks at three or four or five across the 45 and behind that and behind that again. And just stop the ball getting into him. Now, you know, remains to be seen how well that works because we all know Shane Walsh is probably up there with David Clifford, you know, in players who can get away from their men and, you know, create a yard for scoring opportunity. That's all he needs. And again, it's right foot, left foot. It doesn't matter. So it's going to be interesting um, to see what sort of tactics both employ. Malachi work is in one for surprises. It's kind of, this is the way we do it and that's how it's going to be. I don't know if Kilmer Cud will will pull something up, you know, either sleeve, but I think Glenn will go defensive, put the 15 behind the ball when Kilmer Cud are attacking, try and break out and get scores. I don't see a high scoring game. I think it might even be lower than the 113 to 111 last year. Um, but how do you stop Shane Walsh? Well, <laughs> it's anybody's guess. Nobody's managed to stop him yet. So now would be the ideal time if you're a Glenn supporter to figure out how to stop him or just how to stop the ball getting to him in the first place. But that's it. Like, and the reality yeah. is, is Croaks <clears throat> this year, whenever he comes on, they just get better. And one thing that's an interesting stat that I have noticed is Croaks and Glenn have both, on average, scored five points more than they have conceded. Both of them have, mm. like, have an average winning margin of five points. Right. So, like, they've been very similar in how they've got to this stage. The only difference is Croaks have had a real, real wobble this year. Mm -hmm. Like, they really looked like they were about to go out at the Dublin semifinals. Like, I was working with Dublin GA this year, like, absolutely honored to have done some work with them there. Um, in the Dublin Championship, they beat Sylvester's in the first round 14 points to 2 5. That was a bit of an arm wrestle of a game, but Croaks just had their noses in front from start to finish. They beat Castle Knock in a bit of a mad game, 4 11 to 1 14. And we were all thinking, right, Croaks look like they were conceding a lot, but they were also scoring a lot going mm. forward as well. Then they beat Scary's 117 to 17 points. And Scary's had them on the ropes at the end mm. where they were firing high ball in on top of them. Croaks dealt with it. But at the end of the game, you could tell Robbie Brennan wasn't exactly over the moon that they had ended up in a position where they were fighting for their lives. <clears throat> like his, his post-match interview showed that. Um, and then came the Ballymun Kickhams game. They won 14 points to 10, not too much fuss there. And then came the Rohini game, 
It was like in the Ballymun Kickhams game, they were more or less able to make Ballymun play on their terms. And when they do that, they sometimes tend to coast. Mm. And they definitely got caught coasting against Rahini because out of nowhere, Rahini hit them for a one, two or something. And we're right on their tail and we're in front. And with the last kick of the game, Crokes were three points behind and Luke Ward fires it into the net to save them. The last kick of the game, he saves yeah. them. Game goes to extra time. Rahini had their chances to win. It goes to penalties after finishing 2-15 each after extra time. And Crokes slot all five of the penalties away. Like You can't argue with that. A five mm-hmm. out of five from the penalties, really, really well done. Um, and then they smashed Ballyboden to pieces in the final. I predicted yeah. that they would beat Ballyboden. I didn't think they'd win that easy. But they won 114 to nine points. We've all seen Shane Walsh's goal. That's him hitting top form. Then they go into Leinster. 112 to four points, they beat Era Oak. 116 to 111, they beat RD St. Mary's. And they beat Nace 114 to 10 points in the Leinster final, which flattered them a bit. Yeah. Nace were right there with them from start to finish. And Crokes put the burners on at the end. Shane Walsh got the goal. It made it look a lot more comfortable than it actually was. But the point is, is when you look at Crokes, no Ben Shovlin. Craig Diaz is nowhere near as fit as he was this yeah. time last year. Uh, Connor Casey hasn't really been around. He was a big midfield player for them down through the years. Andrew McGowan was away. Then he came back. Is he at his best? No, mm. Killian O'Shea. We haven't seen him. And like he's a, a defender who had been on Dublin squads and all down through the years. He is a really, really good player. Um, they are different to how they are, how they were last year. And what I, but the key thing mm. is I mentioned is Ben Shovlin and. Connor Casey and the fitness of Craig Diaz. That's all midfielders. That's all yeah. what has been their first choice midfield for the last five years. They're going in here against the Glen side in a provincial ground who are so strong around the middle. McFall, yeah. Mass, Bradley. You have a relatively new midfield pairing there in Rory O'Carroll and Brian Sheehy. Like, and you're yeah. thinking to yourself, or oh, Mark O'Leary has played in there too and has done really well. But this is a hell of a test. Like This is as difficult a club midfield as you're going to come up against. It's basically Derry's midfield. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think I was, I'm trying to remember, I was at that. Castlenock was my local club when I lived in Dublin for 12, 13 years. I, I'm pretty sure I was at that game or right in the championship. And then I think we were all a bit disappointed at the the, the final, the Bally Bowden game. It was kind of a... Yeah, it wasn't anything to write home about, really. Um it was a bit like when TG Carr came to Westmead for the Westmead County final and it ended up 9-7. It was the worst game ever. So it wasn't as bad as that, but it certainly wasn't very entertaining. Um, but for people who maybe hadn't seen much of Shane Walsh, you know, before it was probably good for them to get to see, you know, what he's like, as you said, in, in top form. Uh, the Nace game definitely was flattering on the scoreboard and the goal at the end, obviously, you know, puts a nice cherry on the top, but Nace probably had the chance to had chances to probably you know take them down, and as you said, Kilmer could have been different. Yeah, it's probably the, the word you use, probably the best word to use because you know Glen have got thirteen of their fifteen from last year. Kilmer could certainly don't, and it's it's kind of showing a little bit that you do need the bit of settled kind of team you know to to fight for the top honors. And Glen had that, whereas Kilmer could, as you said, are missing names and the lack of fitness yeah if Craig Diaz is an interesting one I, I have heard a couple of people or I've read a couple of uh, people on forums chatting about that as well and the Andy McGowan thing I suppose I didn't look too closely at it till I read a bit about it online and then I realized oh yeah actually yeah, he did get a bit of a you know a run around at times from from Alex Byrne and maybe that doesn't you know doesn't put Kill McCud in the in the best kind of shape and going up to Newry is going to be great crack um, well, that's that's the difference, isn't it? Like yeah. How how much of a difference does that make from the fact that they played in Croke Park last year mm-hmm. and now they're playing in Newry? Yeah. It's going to be a lot tighter. It's, it's yeah. going to be a lot more physical. It's going to be a lot muckier. <laughs> yeah, and like that that doesn't allow the open space for Shane Walsh to run no. the way that he did against Nace, the way that he did against um, Bally Bowden, because Glenn Everybody. won't let him do that. Yeah. It's it's. It's it. You know, like the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, this is cooked up for Glenn because 
it's a lot closer to them. Yep. They are going to travel for that game. They have revenge on their mind to take mm-hmm. out Croaks. And as you know, there's no team that would love to beat them more than Glenn. Yeah, and as you say, Jed, the more even I said the start about Kilmacud, you know, being fancy, the, the more I'm now swaying to Glenn as we speak. So it's going to be mucky. You know, you're not going to have the no offense to any the ground staff up in Park Esler, but it, it's a completely different place. You know, I went up there for a West Mead game before, and it's nice and narrow. It doesn't suit that expansive football at all. It would suit Glenn putting 15 behind the ball because they will have less ground to cover in their defensive slots. Um, and yeah, you kind of you're putting everything against Kilmacoda. It's exactly what they don't want to play in. They're going to be in a little kind of cauldron because obviously Glenn are going to, I would suggest, they're going to outnumber support wise. You know, it won't just be Glenn people, it'll be people who just want to, you know, yeah, an Ulster team for a bit of revenge basically is what they're looking for. And yeah, to see the dubs taken down, you know, just you know, what a lot of people outside of Dublin, you know want whether it's club or county um and yeah as you said it's been it's been a stumble um but for a lot of people like you will know having been at you know most of the championship games i've been fortunate to be at a couple of them having lived in dublin as well and gone back up and still teaching there but for anyone who just saw kilmacud and bally bowden will think ah yeah kilmacud will they'll wipe the floor you know with glenn it'll be handy shay Walsh is going to knock the lights out completely and it's it's not going to be like that at all. Like if he gets his scores, he's going to have to earn them. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's you know now that we say it, it's actually ideal for Glenn to to shut him off and stop the ball getting in there. Um, it's it's actually only when you say it's in your that you realise God, this is actually a completely different set of ball together. Yeah, and look, we've we've talked about it now for about twenty minutes. <laughs> it's it's time to put our money where our mouth is. We've talked about Glenn. We've talked about Kilmichael Croaks. Here we go. <clears throat> Official prediction. Chemical Croaks versus Wadi Graham's Glen. Jason, I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> Pick Kilmacud or Glen. Bear in mind the games in Uri. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to change what I said at the start. I probably came in a little bit kind of uh, naive at the start. We're going Kilmacud and expect them. But the more we've chatted over the last 20 minutes, kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go Glen. In a low scoring game, um, like an exact score, something like 11 9, 11 10, something yeah. along that lines. I'll probably be proving completely wrong to be a goal in the first five seconds, and I'll be completely wrong, but um, something low scoring, Glenn to win. And I think Un- Unimal Holland, I think, could be the, the quiet difference between the team, between the teams. I think he's a great footballer. And is not going to get you know much of the headlines because of McFall, Glass, Talon, etc., and Doherty. And I think he could be the kind of subtle difference. He could get a, a couple of scores that could win the game. But I'll go with Glenn um, to win in a low scoring affair on a mucky pitch. Okay, yeah, um, I am going to go with Glenn as well. And I can't believe that I'm doing that. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm doing that because I went with Kilmacud from the start, but. As you said, when you when you talk about it and when you realise it's in Yuri, when you realise that Glenn have definitely been planning for Kilmacud for ages now, for a year, and when you think about who Croaks are missing from last year, they're missing Ben Shovelin, Craig Diaz is not hundred percent fit. The ground is going to be tight. The weather is going to be awful. It's going to be a lot harder for Shane Walsh and Paul Mannion to get into their stride. And what we've noticed is in those battles. Glenn, particularly in the provincial grounds, have more experience dogging out the win. They yeah. did it against Nave Cunnell with Emmett Bradley getting that last minute point. They battled mm-hmm. past Carrigan. They battled past Scottstown. Kilmacud haven't really had to battle past anyone since mm-hmm. the Rahini game. So I just think, I actually think Glenn will get a goal. I think they'll get a goal in the first half and they'll win by like one, eight to 10 points or something, something really tight. And they will absolutely love it. Look, I could be proved wrong. Kilmer could absolutely have the potential to prove me wrong, but I'm just going to go with Glenn to get revenge. And I mean, what, what a result that will be for them, especially considering yeah. everything that happened last year. They will love that. Now, 